Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today I want to talk to you about using board games and math together. And I think this is a fantastic thing. I was a math, high school math teacher for many years, and I know that when I went into that classroom, math was not many of the students' favorite subjects. But there are so many games that I could use to teach math, and I'm a big believer in using fun to make concepts clear. Now, there's gazillions of games to teach math. So this is just kind of a smattering of 10 great games that I think are worth checking out and using to help teach math. And also, I tried to pick games that were available that you could find and get. So here we go. Number 10 is a newer game called Queen Domino. And in Queen Domino, it's kind of like dominoes, it's in the name, and you're taking these and you're building a little area in front of you and you're trying to accomplish little goals that you get that will give you points. And so in this game, you are trying to figure out, okay, I'm gonna put this here and you're using a lot of math back and forth and also some logic to figure out the best places to put all these and it comes together in a very fun game. Number nine is Quix. Now, Quix is in a category in which we call roll and write, where you will roll a die and people will write these numbers down on a sheet, kind of like Yahtzee. Uh, Quix is very similar to that, where you're rolling these numbers and putting these on this piece of paper, trying to put the numbers in the right spots. It's really simple. It could be played with a whole classroom if you wanted to. You could just call out the numbers and everyone write them down and seeing who gets them in the right order. Number eight is Drop It. Now, Drop It is a game that uses geometric shapes. I'm a big fan of geometry. There's a lot of geometric games, but this one is newer and I'm kind of enamored with it, where you're taking different shapes, circles, squares, um, parallelograms, and triangles, and dropping them down in this clear thing grid, trying to make them land in different spots to get points. There's some rules as to where and when they won't get points, but dropping them in, trying to figure out how are they going to bounce, how does this shape fit in, really well done. Number seven is Formula D. Now, Formula D is a racing game. And in this game, you are working with probabilities. You are racing a car around a track and you get to roll different dice, but there's all sorts of dice in this game, from a four-sided die all the way up to a 30-sided die. The 30-sided die has numbers on it, I think, from 21 to 30, while the four-sided die is from one to three or something like that. There's different numbers on each die. And when you're racing, you want to move up into a higher gear, which lets you roll the bigger dice. But when you hit curves, and you have to hit curves, you want to hit them exactly, if possible. So you might want to need to use a, a lower die. And so you're figuring out the probabilities, figuring out the best way to move your cars on the track. It's a fun racing game. Number six is Veggie Garden. Veggie Garden has a bunch of plants that are out there, and as you put these plants, there are these different vegetables in the garden, they're going to be worth points, but you're also collecting vegetables in your hand. And at the end of the game, the, on, the, on the board where the vegetables are will determine how many points they are. The more that are out there, the more points it's worth, but then the more I put in my hand, the fewer points are out there. So I have to learn to give and take in this game. It's also light and fun veggie garden. Number five is Stockpile. A stock market game. There are a lot of these games out there. A very famous one called Acquire. Stockpile is my favorite one. Even though the game kind of has a little bit of insider trading in it, which is not recommended to do in real life, but in this game, it's you can look at it as knowing some knowledge. And you're watching these stocks go up and down, and you have to learn to buy low and sell high. And the problem is, is that you don't know all the information. And so you are guesstimating and watching and guessing, but also using your knowledge of when to get the most money in this game. There's a lot of stock market games out there. Like I said, some are too complex. Some are too lucky. This one falls in the middle and is my favorite stock market game that exists. Number four is Sushi Go Party. Now, Sushi Go Party is a very simple game. It's a drafting game where you have a hand of cards. You pick one to keep and pass them along. And each card you keep is going to give you points in some way. Some give you points if you get several of them. Some give you points if you just get one of them. It's simple addition and subtraction, but I think it's useful to know. It also gives you a little bit of um, you know, risk management. Oh, this one, I only get points if I get three of them. Oh, uh, well, I only have one. Should I, should I take another one? Or there's probably not another one that's going to come around. It's a really good game, plays fast and quickly. Number three is Take It Easy. Take It Easy is a game in which you will be turning over tiles, and these tiles are randomly chosen. One person will call it a tile, like bingo, and everyone else will take the same tile and put it on their grid. And you're all trying to put these on the grid. It's very similar to Quicks that I mentioned earlier, and you're trying to put 
tiles with the same number in the same column rows. And that's very difficult to do to get them all in the right spots. But if you do, you'll get more points and get numbers and trying to figure out the best place to put them. Number two is Math Flux. Now, Flux is a game. There's many different variations out there. Math Flux is my favorite. In Flux, the game has some very specific rules. And as the game goes by, players will play cards that will change the rules. But if you play with one of the variations, a math variation, which I recommend, you will be, maybe your, your goal is to try to get to 14. And if you can use different arithmetic operations to have the cards in front of you get to that number, you can win. And being forced to think, and how am I going to do these different arithmetic functions, really works well in this game. And finally, number one is the Exit Series. Now this is a series of, you might have seen the very popular escape rooms that have popped up all over the world. This takes that and puts it into a box. And there's other ones like the Unlock series, the Escape Room series. But Exit's my favorite. All oh, there's so many puzzles in there. There's logic puzzles, there's math puzzles, there's, you know, how do you match things puzzles, think outside the box puzzles, and there's all sorts of cool things. And you work together as a team. I think it works best with maybe five players or so on these. And they're just so entertaining and so much going on involved with them, but they're very solvable. And there's a, even a little bit of a hint system in case you get stuck. Very good, and they teach a lot of different math skills. But there are many games that I probably missed. So why don't you tell me in the comments below some great games to teach math to other people. Either way, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Tom Bassel, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.